to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to our crew, but my return deeds. You know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well, go ahead on and subscribe, but before you blink, share this link. Welcome back, Wi-Fi's, to yet another underground transmission of the Wireless Woman. Today, we will be talking all about being America's most wanted, most desired undesirables. <music> But before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time for my bevy of beautiful, bodacious, black beauties to come to the front of the class for today's transmission. All right, welcome back to all of my Wi-Fi's and welcome in to any new viewers that I may have this week. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you also click the notification bell for uploads of when I go live and when I upload new content. Also leave me some comments down below. I really look forward to engaging with you there. Um, I can't promise you that I won't give you no smoke, that I won't give you no gas down there, especially if you didn't actually watch the whole entire episode. You just heard something and then wanted to jump down there and respond to it. We do not react here. We respond. And a response can only be given where information has been received. So keep that in mind. All right, today we're going to be talking about being the most desired undesirables I have never in my lifetime seen a group of people be so worried about people that they say they don't like it's starting to feel like the 80s it's starting to feel like goonies like it's we're, we're getting this new generation of bullies like we had real bullies in real life in the 80s then you had like the more like cyber bullies as technology kind of came along but now we're, we're getting back into that regular just old school bully phase and if any of you ever had like a real bully especially if you're in my generation you know not somebody just clapping back all in comments but an actual bully someone that waited for you to get off the bus from school somebody who threw your lunch tray down in the floor i mean a if you ever really had a bully what's the advice go ahead and drop it in the comments if you're in the live chat right now go ahead go ahead and put it in there what was the advice your parents gave you when you came home crying, shaking, and quaking about a bully. Beat them. Your parents, that was like you told her bo to beat me. Your parents gave you that advice. Pick one of them off and fight them. So here's the thing. Black women, we're pressed on every side. Hard pressed. Press down, shaking together, running over with criticisms about how we look, 
what music we listen to, how we dress, who we are. Someone has to be watching really closely to really have the amount of critiques that they've had for us. But you know me, I'm going to talk around the issue before I get to my point. So when I was growing up, I was what males considered undesirable. When I meet black men now, especially the ones that don't date black women, and I'm really like, who hurt you? Who hurt you? Right? This is this is deeper. This is deeper than some hair weave and belly fat. Who hurt you? And a lot of times, you know, I don't ask the question that way. Clearly, I wouldn't get the answer that I seek. But generally, somewhere within the 1,556 critiques that a Black man who does not date Black women, let me qualify that because I know as soon as I said the words Black men, there were some Black men that got triggered. They didn't even know which ones I was referring to, but... um. For the black men who don't date, who will not, who refuse to date, entertain, look at, speak to peaceably black women, speak peaceably to black women, um, there will come a point in my conversation with them where they will recall not being picked, not being chosen, not being revered in middle school, usually. Sometimes if they're a particularly late bloomer, high school. Um, And for me, I can understand that, like I can respect that because I was heavily undesirable in grade, middles, high school, Some might even say college, but. And during that time, I became a wing woman. I became the type of girl that had lots of guy friends who would use me as the conduit to build relationships with my friend girls. That was how you met girls pre digital media age. I know. A lot of people have forgotten these days that some (laughs) have never existed in a time where you actually had to speak to a person in order to to date them, uh, to meet them. You actually had to get to know things about them. And I would be that girl that guys would come to pick for information. Like, do she like me? You know, what type of guys do she like? Like, what did she? Because, you know, they intended to put forward the best representation of themselves. So they needed that intel, that background information. I was a double agent. You know, I was co-intel pro at that time. And it was my job to get intel on the girls and bring it back to the guys. But what was interesting was I would always have those say anything type of relationships and encounters with guys where I possessed all of the qualities that these guys wanted in girlfriends, but because I didn't look in the way that would get them clout, because I didn't look in the way that would bring all the boys to the yard. You know, I didn't have those milkshakes. It it meant that I had to be in close proximity with men really most of the time for them to notice me. And I would hear things like, oh, you know, I wish my girl was more like you or, you know, I wish girls were more like you. And that's a tough spot to be in. I can identify with men who have been friend zoned because that happens to women as well. We get friend zoned also more often than not. The song that Usher did, You Make Me Want to Leave the One I'm With. To start a new relationship with you. This is what you do. Think about her and you know the things that come along with it. You make me. He said, before anything began between us, you were like my best friend. The one I used to come and talk to when me and my girl was having problems, you would say it'll be okay. 
suggest little nice things I should do. But when I go home at night and lay my head down, come on, it's your turn. Put it in the chat. You know the rest of the words. You know the rest of the lyrics. Uh, I, I'm giving you a second to put them down there because I want to see you participate. Okay. I was that girl. Like I was not that it girl. I was that girl that had those types of intimate relationships with males and with boys, but they really did not value that in a in a mate and in a partner. I promise I'm going somewhere with this. I promise I am. Just stick with me. I, I'm telling stories old lady style. I know y'all TikTokers. You need me to get to the point in like 15 seconds or less, but I'm going to do it the way the ancestors passed on our history. And I'm going to tell you the story. My name, Devian, D-E-V-I-A-N, is actually an Irish name and it means bard. And a bard is a storyteller that tells a story to a song. So listen, I was, I was born to do this, okay? And as long as I have the microphone, you will listen to everything I have to say. <laughs> or click off. But make sure if you're going to click off that you like or dislike and leave a, leave a comment. Let me know why you clicked off. But in the meantime, so I was that girl that guys generally passed over for my more attractive friends. And I'm going to be honest, at that time, I really thought it was a matter of desirability. Like these girls had racks on racks or, you know, they were, were putting out whatever it was that made them more desirable to me. But as I got older, I started to find out that actually what it was was access. These girls were just so much more accessible. And let's just be honest, as I've gotten older, <laughs> I tell people this in real life, I am way too intelligent to be this beautiful. Okay. When I started to get beautiful <laughs> and I was, and I had that much character and that much intelligence from all the years of being the ugly duckling and not being chosen. So by the time I got to swan status, by the time I got black swan status, great. See, like I was super intelligent and had lots of character. Like I was like the full package by that point. And that made me so, so much less accessible because it's like, dang, how do we get to her? She's beautiful. We can't use the regular beauty stuff because she's too smart for that. Like I actually got to have conversation and character and accomplishment and education to get next to her. Buddy, it's like a deadly combination. but. When I was growing up that way, it gave me that time to make those investments in myself, to be able to bring that full package to the table. And what my issue is, what I'm taking issue with when it comes to the men, is that you don't get to pick the desirability standards. By many standards, I'm still, even in all this glory, baby, and all this gorgeousness. I'm still highly undesirable to many, many, many men. I am somewhat of a collectible. You know, it's got to be something that you're just into for you to appreciate who I am and what I bring to the table. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with being a collector's item. I'm fine with being rare. I'm fine with being mint. Uh, I'm I'm fine with being something that you don't necessarily go and get off of a rack. I have to be hunted for, hunted down, and I'm okay with that. And and not everyone who seeks shall find. You know, not everyone that finds me <laughs> is going to be able to match me. Um, not everyone that finds me is going to value me at the same level I do. There's been tons of people that sold off collector's items that were worth millions and they sold them away for a few thousand, not even knowing that it was something anybody was that interested in. So I'm fine with that. 
I'm fine with the fact that I'm not universally attractive. But I can tell you this. When it comes to proximity, anybody that spends a prolonged period of time around me is is going to say it, but they're going to see it and say that like this guy that I just know, he we're not even like super cool friends or anything like that. But he said that he said, you're a rare find as a woman. He said, I can see why men want to wife you up. He said, you you're a wife. and I've been married twice. I mean, that can be true. You can be walking through the world and have the golden arm of a pitcher and never get picked for a team. It has nothing to do with your value. But I'm I'm intrigued by the fact that men have started to get bitter by that type of experience because when I wasn't being picked and I wasn't being chosen, I learned so much more about men by being in that unchosen space with them. And I mean I get it, guys. Y'all don't want to be friend zoned. Nobody really likes that. That wasn't fun. But when you take the desirability politics out of it, that's a big part of why I am able to be so heavily desired by men who even would say they find me undesirable because I am fit. I know I'm fat, but I actually am pretty fit. And I'm very feminine. There's a lot of men who think I hate men. They project that onto me. But for men who are in my intimate space, they would tell you that I'm very feminine. I'm very agreeable. I'm very willing to find compromises and center space. I'm very willing to forgive, to turn a page. I'm going to hold you accountable on that next page. For all the information that was on the page before. But this new page, it's a new page. Let's turn it over. Let's see what else we can do. Let's see what else we can write. I'm very cooperative. I'm just not friendly. Now I'm fit, feminine, not friendly. Why should I be? I don't even know you like that. All right, here we go. Hey, what's that? Same time, bro. I don't know you, man. Same oh. time. I don't know you. Okay. Same time. In order to have a friend, you have to show yourself friendly. So yeah, I'm I'm I can I can honestly say I'm not that. But even in that space of being all of those things, I'm undesirable somewhere to someone. But it doesn't take away any of my intrinsic character that I have as a woman to be exactly what a man needs. And that's the place where one, I'm gonna go to one side of this with my ladies and say women. Stop making that stuff about you. Stop thinking that what a man sees with his eyes and wants has anything to do with you. More often than not, he chasing down some girl at the middle school dance that embarrassed him in front of his friends because he asked her to dance because he built up the courage. He built up the courage while everybody else was standing on the wall and walked all the way across that auditorium to ask her to dance, for her to flat out turn him down and just joke him in front of her friends. He never got over that. And everybody that remind him of her can get it. Anybody can get it. Especially women that remind him of her. Something may have happened with their mom. Who knows? Who knows who hurt these people? But it wasn't you, and it ain't your problem, and it ain't got nothing to do with you. Stop taking it personal. On the flip side, let me address the men and the males. And I want to do this for the women that watch my podcast because it's us that's on here and, and not really a whole lot of males, but there's a couple. And for the ones that do watch, you can take this out with you into the world and maybe help the male population with it. But like I said, I'm not specifically speaking to males because I feel like you guys need to police yourself. I don't like men all in this space telling women what they need to wear and do and say and all that stuff. So I'm definitely not going to try to bring that energy. But I want to say this. We as women are consistently being told we need to choose better. That the state of the male (laughs) landscape has been determined by what we've been choosing, that y'all are cranking out and turning out 
Pookies and Ray Rays because we like them and we choose them because we want thugs and we're all about money and we won't date a nice guy and we won't date a good guy. So it would, it would reason that maybe the reason why you got so many females that's listening to Glorilla and wearing green hair and got BBLs, maybe you like it. I mean, I. I have been passed over many times as a woman. I'm twice divorced and everyone thinks that's my fault, but I've been passed over several times. <laughs> my first ex-husband has had five fiancés since we split up 12 years ago. And baby, there ain't nothing out there in these streets but dust for my second ex-husband. I already know. <laughs> so my point is, Maybe just maybe the desirability politics are being chosen by men. I'm not going to go too deep into it in this video because I intend to do another video about how the type and amount of men that were attracted to me once I locked my hair, once I became more natural in my aesthetic. And I'm going to bring in some old videos. Baby, I used to be a vixen. I used to be in these scoots, okay? <laughs> I used to spin the block on two wheels. Like, I wasn't loose or nothing like that, but I was just more desirable. The things that men desire, and this has been studied, straight hair over curly, light skin over dark, Thinner women over heavier women. These are just the politics of dancing. These are the desirability politics that tend to be true. I lost 50 pounds and I saw the difference. I had hair weave flowing down my back and I saw the difference in the volume, in the veracity, the intensity of the pursuit of men and how that changed when certain things about my appearance changed. So y'all are telling us this stuff like we don't know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> Some of us don't care, but men make the desirability politics when it comes to women, just like women make the desirability politics when it comes to men. There are a lot of women that are with broken mm -hmm. men and they haven't given men any incentive to actually have to come to the table and have something. And so for every guy that looks out and sees a beautiful, bad woman, fly, educated, got her own house, but got a dude living in it, eating all of the fruit snacks, playing 2K while she at work, it sends the message, this is what is desirable. So, here, here's my only point. Black women are still running the beauty standard. Everything, everything that a black man could want is in a black woman. I know this for a fact because all of these same said black men, me being in an undesirable place allows me to be able to hear the things that men really say about women. That's why when y'all be wondering why I think they so despicable, <laughs> despicable me, baby, I have heard your, your inner thoughts and it's disgusting. That locker room talk, the way y'all talk around females that you don't desire about the ones that you do, baby, it's just a, a dumpster fire. It really is. And because I've heard those discussions, that locker room talk, as y'all call it, you know, I, I don't feel any need to impress men like that. I know y'all are so very easy to impress, especially if you find a woman desirable. She she don't have to have nothing else going for herself. But these desirability politics are dictated by what you guys go after. If you go in the DMs of these ladies, you're feeding the beast and the monsters that you say that you say you don't want in a woman. It's it's no way that these women can be undesirable by you 
under under these circumstances. I mean, that's what you told us. You told us y'all, y'all are picking Pookies and Ray Rays. And even though, I mean, it's just the largest, most accessible population within our culture. Like all of us can't possibly have a Russell Wilson. The population isn't there. First of all, if all black men were wonderful, were awesome, great, loving providers, family men, awesome fathers, did the right thing every time, didn't cheat, monogamous, like if they were perfect, there wouldn't be enough black men to go around for black women. And it, and it's, I'm at a loss because I do see both sides of it, but honestly, men pick better. You know, when we look out as women over the terrain of sex workers, of porn stars, of the women that you promote and put on pedestals. It does not represent the majority. And by majority, I could be talking about 51% of black women. And they are being wounded by being friend zoned, overlooked, disregarded in that way. The same way you were. If that could turn a black man who has the benefit of male privilege. I know y'all don't think y'all do. Y'all do into that imagine what it does to the self-confidence of a woman you know of a woman who feels like she has to put on everything you desire to be noticed by you that it's not something that she takes off it's not the character that she builds it's not the accomplishments that she has it's not any of those things it has to be put on it has to be glued on it has to be adhesed to the body, injected into the body. It has to be something bigger than all that. Listen, being ugly gave me time to become awesome. Like an awesome person, like a good friend. To, to know how to cook, to have life skills. To be great with my finances. Y'all, I've been in this... um. Loan process, I was telling you, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a house. And so people are pulling my credit for a mortgage and, oh, it's devastating, y'all. Ooh, they're man, Chris, they're about to eat me alive. But the good thing is they'll, they'll be consolidated. But my point is, I've had people turn me down for a mortgage. They're like, listen, we can't finance you. I don't know what their reasons were because I don't know what their underwriting looks like. But. Every last one of them, every last one of them, even the credit union, they were like, listen, keep doing what you're doing, though, because your finances look great. Your debt to income ratio is perfect. Your credit is perfect. Your payment history is perfect. We just can't finance you And black women, this is the position that you're in. Many of you are working hard. You're smart. You're talented. You're gifted. Because first of all, that's what black people are. We were endowed by God to be young, black, and gifted. We we are forever young. We have some of the best, smoothest skin. Even when we are fat, we got West African body types. You can still get more work out of a fat black woman. Maybe that ain't lazy fat. Okay. We love like the Nile River. We giving more love to our community, to men that don't deserve it, to feel the earth. We've we've loved with the love of God. We use black hands to raise black children. We wipe black faces and put Vaseline on them. Black women, you're just something amazing. I don't know what type of black women need some of these black men been around. Sorry to this man. Sorry to this man. Because the black love that I have experienced at the hands of black women is unmatched. I can't imagine there's anything purer or more beautiful on the earth than that. And I mean, I, I've, I've had neighborly love 
from from white women the solidarity of us being women you know i've had camaraderie with other people and other races of people so this isn't intended to make nobody feel bad which you know if you feel bad because of what i said you need to work on your you know self-confidence but black women it ain't got nothing to do with you and you can't carry that you can't carry the weight of living up to the image that somebody has for you that isn't even who you are they don't love the texture of your hair. They don't love the thickness of your lips unless it's on somebody that's got white skin. They don't love your body the way it's it it's intended to look and be. But they can't stop talking about you though. But they can't forget about you. They out in the world trying to find somebody that can compare to you. Because you leveled up and you left them. Like I said, I was a genius in school. I couldn't figure it out. I mean, it was middle school. Everybody was ugly. I don't think I was not as good looking as some of my friends. I mean, someone was lighter skinned than me. They had like bigger boobs. Like I was, <laughs> I was made up like a 15 year old boy all the way up until I had my first child. But. I was so desirably undesirable. I've never in my life had a man stand next to me and get to know me as a person and not say, I would choose you. If they don't, they'll be like, they'll give me some reason and it'll be something physical. It'll be something stupid. You know, I, I really don't like dark women. I mean, you too dark to have so much audacity. I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. <laughs> the black audacity of you, bitch. I mean, that's what it is. You know, you can't buy audacity, honey. If you could, I'd sell it because I got more than enough. <laughs> I got the audacity, but my point is, because I'm finally making it, me and y'all got to invest in the type of women you want to date and see out here in the world. I know you think it's completely holy and totally our responsibility, but you blamed us when you was walking around filling the community with dust not wanting to take care of kids, not being able to stick around. It was the black woman that took the black man out the house because she wanted welfare instead of a black man. So explain this. Explain this, what we see. Explain Glorilla. Explain Megan Thee Stallion to me where they come from. Explain these women that can't be tamed, that you, that you just can't get to act right. I, I will just put it in the comments. I just want to know. That's our fault too. Pookie, our fault. And Shan Quilla is our fault too. Just we ain't gonna get no dads involved, no men involved. Y'all ain't got nothing to do with this. Community just running rampant, dumpster fire, out of control. Ain't gonna get no fire hydrant. Ain't gonna get no fire extinguisher. Ain't gonna try. No, no. No. Okay. Because all the women I know that's at home cooking up something good, laying in the bed by themselves with rollers and face cream on. I mean, ain't in the street. Reading a book right now as we speak. Ain't even watching this podcast because they somewhere in the bed reading a book. But they by themselves, though. They ain't this enough for you. They ain't that enough for you. Women get put in the friend zone, too. Some of y'all men need to go back through your friend zone. And maybe look for what you actually desire, what you actually want in a partner and a mate there. These are just my thoughts. These are just my black thoughts. I'd like to hear yours. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comment and let me know. Especially ladies, I need y'all to chime in. Some of y'all are just gorgeous. You have been chased all your life. You have been told you was beautiful from the time you came out the womb. You just had a... A, a sliver of baby hair right here when you was born. But 
Some of us came up the rough side of the mountain. You know what I mean? Some of us have to buy our good looks. Let's be honest. Some of you, some of you women, without your lace fronts and your lashes and all that, look like fully grown men. You see, that's okay. Because I really feel like what it is to be a woman, what men are really lacking in their lives that make them go out and seek the company of a woman is something that has nothing to do with your physical beauty. Honey, I wake up in the morning looking like my daddy, stunting like my daddy. But I'm a beautiful woman on the inside. I know that. I know how to make beautiful things. I know how to make a house a home in my body. I know how to dress this up. I know how to dress this house up and make it a home, baby. I know how to make a black man feel at home. Okay. But some of y'all have to take that rejection and cultivate a space a space for the right woman to come in and be what you really needed from somebody cute that treated you like trash. Y'all tell us that. We can't hold y'all feet to the fire to have Kooky and Ray Ray did us. Y'all shouldn't have to come in and raise the kids that Marcus and Derek, every dude I know named Marcus and Derek, maybe. Trash, baby, what is up with that name, Derek? If your name is Derek and you are not trash, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry to this man. It's like being a Gemini. It's just, they done ruined it for you. And this guy today that I had <laughs> in my meeting, he tried to refute that. He was like, no, it ain't no Derek. I said, name one dude you know named Rick that anybody ever said anything good about. I said, anytime you hear a dude, they say Rick. They be like, yeah, you remember Rick? The one who used to sell the loose cigarettes down the street. Rick, you remember he got locked up in 96 because he had broken to them people. How, Rick, you remember Rick? I said, obviously, if Rick ain't never been shit, their Rick is following in his footsteps. He was like, you're right. He's like, I ain't never heard nothing nice about a dude named Rick. See? That's my point. But anyway, my point was y'all said y'all didn't want to come and raise Derek and Marcus kids that they left off on us. What makes you think we want to deal with the mess that you still upset about because Rolanda didn't want you in middle school? Heal. Okay? Heal. Go heal. Get some therapy. Okay? Because we been black women, we're the largest group in therapy. We've been, we've been in there. I've been in therapy nine years. And some dudes like nine years. It don't take that long to get it right. Baby, it's a management. <laughs> you supposed to go to your PCP every year. You supposed to go to your dentist twice a year. <laughs> it, we not trying to get healthy. We trying to maintain the health. Okay. A lot of y'all don't even go to financial planners. You should be going to a financial planner every year when you go do your taxes. If not, more than just annually, you should at least be checking in with somebody on your finances, on your health, on your mental health. Why is your big toenail black? These are questions you should be asking experts. Why am I still mad about the girl that didn't want me in middle school? Don't ask me. I got grown men, 50 years old. Y'all didn't want me. Y'all didn't want Y'all who? I met you 19 minutes ago. Okay. So yeah, he'll work on that. And that's all I got. That's all I got to say. But I'd like to hear what you have to say in the comments below. You already know the drill until the next transmission. Last is now dismissed. See you in the next one. Section leaders, what is our concept? One band, one sound. One band, one sound.